going to be awesome. We're going to have a great time in the presence of God. Amen. Uh, did you come to hear the gospel? Yes. You came to the right place. For you're surely going to be blessed today. I'm excited with what the Lord has me share, to share today. And before we end today, I want us to pray for some people. Uh, I want us to minister to some people. You know, uh, if there's any sickness that you're dealing with, any financial trouble that you're going through, any business uh, things that, that, that you're going through that you would like to, to see the kingdom manifest in, uh, you know, we're here to pray with you. And don't let me end until we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that's important. And uh, we're planning on starting also a Wednesday service. Sorry, <laughs> I took <laughs> off the, that announcement, but probably beginning of October. And that's going to be a little bit different than Sunday morning. That's going to be more about worship, prayer, questions, answers. It's going to be a lot more interactive. And it's going to be awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, uh, we're going to continue talking today about what I started last Sunday, and that is releasing the kingdom of God, uh, you know, in, in your life or around you or in every area of your life, if you would. Uh, and uh, I am telling you, there is one thing that is, that is really kind of stopping us from seeing uh, the kingdom manifest. And I will tell you, you know, you remember when I talked here about the two systems, the system of this world and the system of the kingdom of heaven. And the system of this world is all based on fear. It's all based on manipulation. It's all based on um, self-effort. It's all based on basically humans doing what they do. And the kingdom of heaven is all based on God. It's all based on what He does. It's all based on who He is. It's all based on His love. Amen. And the good news is that, you know, the perfect love casts out fear. How do I know that? Well, the Word says it. Amen. Uh, would, you, would you turn with me into uh, the first book of John, chapter 4. And I'll start by verse 17. I've got to hear a lot of scriptures. And I don't know that I'll get the chance to go through all of them. Because I usually get lost in one scripture and try to explain that. But we'll see, we'll see how that's going to work. Amen. So 1 John chapter 4 verse 17 says this. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now watch this. This is not saying, uh, this is exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> this is not saying, what this is not saying is this is how God's love is made perfect. God's love is already, already perfect. Amen. Amen. But it says here, here is our love made perfect. Are, are, you, are you hearing me? So the, the Bible says here is our love made perfect. Amen. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So why isn't our love made perfect in, in many cases? Why don't, why, don't have, why don't believers have perfect love towards God or towards other people? And reason is, they don't have boldness in the day of judgment. In other words, they still live in the past. They still think that God has not forgiven, uh, forgiven them. That God is investigating their life. And listen, the fear of past, of your past, is, is what, what w of, of our past is what keeps hunting us sometimes. You, you know, the, the, the thoughts of, of something about your past coming to, to light, you know, could, could really damage your love towards God or towards other people. You see, but let me, let me read to you. I read this last time in, uh, out of the book of Revelation. Go with me to chapter 1. And I don't even have this in my notes. I told you I get lost in scriptures here. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, right, but the book of Revelation says this, verse 5 in chapter 1. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him 
that loved us. Say, He loved us. Say, He loves us, and He will forever love us, because His love is eternal. But it says, He unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in His own blood. Say, He loved me. He washed me in His blood of all of my sins, past, present, and future. There's no reason for me to be afraid. There's nothing about my past that could be possibly be revealed that God doesn't know about and I have to worry about. God says He forgave me. God says He loved me in my past. The way I was, while I was yet a sinner, God loved me. Amen. Hallelujah. He washed me in His blood. And it says here, And He made us kings and priests unto our God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So here is the point. You know, what it says that your love is made perfect. Your love is made perfect. And it has nothing to do with... with, with with God making your love perfect is when you understand God's love, when you understand how much He loves you, how much He cares for you, and the fact that He forgave you of all of your sins, your love is made perfect. See, sin doesn't have a anything to do with God being upset on you. It has everything to do with you not loving God the way you should. It affects your love for God. It, if you want, it affects your love for other people. It affects the perfection of your love, not of God's love. Amen? Amen? It says here, there is no fear in love. Okay? But perfect love casts out fear. Now, we know that the, the perfect love is the love of God. And we love Him because He first loved God us amen so our love is a response of his love towards us or if you want it's a response to he, to our perception of his love because god loves us i mean he he forever loved us he will forever love us but the way we view god the way we see his love towards us will make the difference whether whether we love him back whether our love is made perfect or not and if see it's not about god's love being made perfect that will cast out fear. It's about you understanding the love of God that will perfect your love and your perfect love will cast out fear. Can, can you track with me so far? All right. Because fear has torment. Here's what I was tell, telling you about. Fear, ha fear has torment. Fear will torment you. I mean, y people worry about stuff. They keep worrying either about the stuff they've, they've done in the past or about their present, that they will not have what they need to have. So if you want fear, it's a manifestation of, uh, fear manifests when you or I have the, have the perception that we're going to lack something, that we're going to miss out on something, or that we something that we have is going to be taken from us. That's where fear settles in. It's not about s bad stuff happening. Bad stuff happens all over the place. And, and it, that will not change you. I mean, here, here's the point. Bad stuff could happen. And if you are in a frightening situation, your adrenaline will kick in because you got us. That's, that's in your system. And you'll get over it. But what we are afraid of, most human beings are afraid of what could happen to them that would cause them to lose something. Either the money that they have, right, or the reputation they have, or um, the position they have, the title they carry. Um, I mean, you name it. There are a lot of fears out there. You know, the loss of their life or of their lo loved ones or the loss of their, uh, their health. I mean, you name it, fear would settle in and will settle in when you give in to believing that you are going to lose something. But I'm here to tell you that God is on your side. And I'm here to tell you how your, uh, how your love is made perfect. It says here, we love Him because He first loved us. That's verse 19, right? Now, 
He that fear is not made perfect in love or doesn't have a correct understanding of the love of God for him. That's really what is going on. And that's why the message of, of the love of God is so central and so important because there is no perfection without the love of God. We know, I preached a whole message on this, that we're made perfect by the love of God. Y you know, not by fear. Fear will never produce righteousness. Well, we may, we may produce self-righteousness, but not the righteousness of God. You know? So let's, let's just look at this. Let's look at a few things that will establish your love to be made perfect. You know? And here's the point. God's love is already in you, and that love is perfect. Amen? But what you need is your love, the manifestation of the love of God that you understand to, to flow through you in a perfect way. Well, let me, let me just tell you a few things that will, will convince you, that we need to convince ourselves of. We need to convince our heart of in order for this love to be made perfect and fear to be gone. How many of you want to see fear gone from your life? How many of you want to see, live a life that is not ruled by fear in any area? I mean, y what I'm talking about is you, you got to get to a place where you're not afraid you're going to get sick. Now, that doesn't mean that you want to get sick. You won't, actually, if you don't, if you don't have that fear. You know, uh, here, here's the point. How many of you would want to live a life, a financial life, that's free of stress? that you're not stressing about? How many of you would want to live a life where you're not concerned about your reputation? You're not concerned about any single thing that, 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 that you can think of. You can live a life that is fear-free. You know, so what, what I believe that this is a very important message, and it is for all of us. And I think that we all, to some extent, we deal with fear. Whether you admit it or not, if you don't, we'll have a uh, deliverance service, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the end. But the point is, you know, we need this message and we need to hear it over and over and over again. Amen. But the first thing that deals with fear and that deals with, uh, that deals with your, ma basically makes your love perfect. And when your love is made perfect, fear is out, is the presence of God. Now, you know, Mark started talking about Joseph. And folks, I don't know that any of us can compare our lives to Joseph's. I mean, if you look at this boy, I mean, he grows up and he's rebuked by his brothers. This, his brothers are jealous on him. And he ends up being rebuked by his parents too because of the visions he's got. And then he, they, they're... Uh, he goes to do a good deed, give food, bring food to his brothers, and guess what? They pick him and they throw him in a pit. Now, these are his brothers we're talking about, okay? And when he thinks that the, finally there's light at, at, the under, at the other end of the, uh, the, the tunnel and there's not another train coming, yeah, guess what? A train was coming. They pull him out of the, out of the pit and they sell him. Yeah, I mean, how, how much worse can it get, you know? And, and then they take him to Egypt, and they sell him to the, uh, to, to the house of Potiphar, right? And, but th here's what you need to see. Uh, you go to Genesis, I believe it's in 30, uh, chapter 39, verse 2. It says that he was a prosperous man because the Lord God was with him. So here's, here's what I want you to see, that through all that he went, even though those events, I'm not t telling you that God told the, the, the brothers to throw him in the pit, neither to sell him. That's not true. But God was to restore him, to get him. No, he gets, he's sold. And when he's a slave, God calls him prosperous because God is with him. Now, if we embrace that mentality that we have Jesus with us, and more than that, we have Jesus in us, there is no way you could call yourself poor. There's no way you could sell, call yourself any other way than prosperous and blessed. And that is a true statement. If you want, it's an understatement. Because God lives in you, and there's no lack in God. Amen? There's no way He's going to lack anything. 
Now, here's, here's what I want you to see. I mean, he gets in the house of Potiphar, and, and he gets promoted because you know, the, the boy knows foreign languages, and the boy know, is wise, has the wisdom of God. Why? Because God is with him. And when then he is tempted, and because he doesn't give up into temptation, guess what? He's thrown into prison. Boy, I hope this story gets better, right? So, <laughs> so in prison, he gets to be the head of the prison again. You know, because he interprets dream. He's got the wisdom of God and the revelation of God. And, and when he thinks he's going to get out of there, you know, the, the friends that he really helped get out of prison forget about him for years. Hey, go figure that. You know, didn't he have any opportunity, every opportunity to complain, to gripe, to be, to be in a bad shape? So if you think your life is tough, I mean, just look at this story. I mean, from being thrown in a pit to being sold as a slave to being the first in the Potiphar's house to be thrown in prison to have, have even friends forget about you, people that you helped. Go figure that. All right? So now here's the point. After all, he gets to be second in command in Egypt. So he ended up on top. Why? Because God was with him. Well, you, know, you all know the story of Daniel. And you know, you know that the lions did not eat Daniel even though he was in the same pit. And the next morning, those that, that were bringing accusations against him, they were food for lions. It's not that the lions weren't hungry. It's that God was with Daniel. Now you look at the three, three young men in the, in the furnace, all right? And y you find out that it doesn't matter how hot the furnace is. All it matters is that you have God with you. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to see this, that this is a reality. Jesus says, behold, I am with you to the end of days, to the end of the age. And I hope we all live to the end of the age, you know, on this earth. But he's, you, could you say that he's going to be with you at least as long as you live on this earth? Amen. So now if he's with you and he promised to be in you, how, how much more do we want? How much more security? And the point is, this, the presence of God casts out fear. The presence of God makes your love perfect. Now whether you feel the presence of God or you don't feel the presence of God, His Word says that He lives inside of you. His Word says that He, he will not leave you nor forsake you. Even if the mom will forget the child, you know, that, that, that she gives milk to. God will never forsake you. God will never leave you. Now that is the promise of God. And he has solutions. He has ways to get you out. So what I am telling you is that the first thing that, that we need to get, to, to get secure in is the fact that God is with us at all times. If you want, go listen to Jeremy's messages. The last couple of messages were on, uh, were on, on loneliness or, or how we view ourselves lonely. And alone, ab apart from God. And I tell you, that is the root of all evil. Because if we know God is with us, if we know God is in us, there's no room for fear. So there's no room for sin in our life. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so that's, that's just the first thing that you could rely on. You could always rely on God. If everybody else takes off, He stays with you. And more than that, he will show you that when everyone else takes off, walks out the door, he walks in. Amen. He is that kind of a friend. He sticks with you. He's closer than a brother. He, he is with you at all times. And he cares for you. And listen, his, his presence is guaranteed. I mean, he's not going to be with you 50% of the, of the time or 99% of the time. Oh, who knows? Maybe now when this is happening to me, God is not going to be here. That's not true, folks. God is with you at all times. And I want to communicate that to you. I want to remind that to you. I want to tell you this is the truth and remind yourself of the Word of God. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come to be with you and live in you forever. He didn't say until you sin. Sin will not kick God away from your life. Amen. If anything, He wants to restore you when that happens. Amen? Because that's the God we have. 
Now the second thing that I want you to see is that you can all, always trust. So what I'm saying to you, for your love to be made perfect, you can trust the presence of God. Yeah, and uh, if, if that's the case, it, it really helps you if you cultivate the presence of God and you just spend time with Him and you become, it's not about Him making, scoring points with God, but it's about, about your heart being established. It's about, you. that's why we love worship. That's why we love speaking in tongues. That's why we love spending time with God. That's why we love uh, setting time aside for God. And I tell you, you should set a time, a, 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 a day or a week, whatever, take a whole day a week and spend it with the Lord. Just pray in tongues, just worship Jesus, just, just get, uh, who benefits out of it? Listen, folks, is, is this to go, for God to, to say, oh, yeah, I really appreciate my, he loves you the same, folks. Amen. But this is for you and it is for me. It's for our own benefit, folks. It is n we're not doing a favor to God. We're doing a favor to ourselves. So the whole perspective on prayer, the whole perspective on, on the Word of God and being in the Word, the whole perspective on worship changes. It makes it all about you being able to, to understand the love of God for you. You being able to perceive His love and to perceive His presence in your life. Amen. And we definitely want our lives, to, to in, in all of our lives, not only to know that God is with us, that is good, but we want to feel God too. And we want other people to feel Him too. Feel His presence. And I'm telling you that it's all about you being aware of His presence. When you pray and you focus on Him, guess what? God didn't come through the ceiling. God is already with you and He is already in you. You are just becoming aware of His presence. Amen? Amen. The second thing that, and I don't know if I'm going to go through all this, but the second thing that I want you to focus on, that I want you to know that you can trust, is God's character. You can always rely on His character. You can always trust that what He said He would do. Now that's His word, but what I'm talking to you about is is His love for you. That will never change. And I think I talked about this quite a bit, right? But here's, here's what, uh, what I want you to see. That He remains faithful. Can you, can, you, can you see this? Open with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Now let's see where we're going to start here, but that's First Timothy. Um, now I'm in the right neighborhood, chapter 2. It says here in verse 13, If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. So what this is saying, even when you do not have faith, even when you are faithless, or even when you are not faithful, God remains faithful, because He cannot deny Himself. Now say, God will always, will always be faithful. That's His nature. He is faithful. His faithfulness is without conditions towards me. His love is without conditions towards me. Now listen folks, I don't know about you, but this should bring rest in your life. This should cause you to trust Him. That now it's not about you and your faithfulness. It's not about you and what you do for God. But it is for about His faithfulness. It is about what He does. And I can tell you, all of God's attributes towards you are without measure and they are without any conditions he simply is faithful to you because of himself he's going to be true to his word amen hallelujah I, I tell you you could you could trust God's word how many of you know that now if you would go to if you would go and look at let's say for instance numbers 23 verse 19 
It says that God is not a man that he should lie. Well, let's go there. Let's read that scripture because I, I believe that's important for us to see. Numbers chapter 23. All right. In verse... What did I say? 19, right? So let's go to Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He has said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Listen, whatever God promised, now, the Word of God says in 2 Corinthians, if you look, uh, 2 Corinthians, let me find that. I believe it's chapter 2. A anyone knows where I'm, where I'm going with this? 2 Corinthians 2. I've got to go to the New Testament now. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 20 says this, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Amen? So we give glory to God for the fact that all his promises are yes and amen. God is not a man that he could lie. Listen, this is... This is pretty much what, what, what people do. This is what I've done. I'm, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about me. Okay? For a long time in my life, when I looked at the promises of God and what He promised, just like Abraham, I thought, how can I help God make this promise come to pass in my life? And you know what happened to Abraham, right? You know what he did? And how he messed it up by his human effort and intervention. You know, now here's the point God is great, God is infinite. He has an infinite ways of bringing his promises to pass in your life and in my life. I am telling you, God doesn't need us to help him with his promises. He doesn't even need us to remind him of his promises. He knows them. He knows what he promised, and he will surely do them. He will find a way to bring them to pass in our lives. See, our problem is that many times we try to bring that to pass, and God says, okay, well, I'll let you try it. I'll let you do that. I'll give you some time to do it. If you want, you know, when I... Listen, I gave you... I talked to you about receiving the kingdom as a child. And I, I gave you the example of, of kids that believe everything pertains to them. And they will take everything. They will not expect that they have to pay for anything. Right? But here's the point. When it comes to promises, again, you know, if I tell Harmony, we're going to go to Chucky Jesus. Guess what she is doing? She is going for her shoes. Right away. And she doesn't have the concept that that's going to be in an hour or two. So I learned when I tell her that we go to Chuck E. Cheese's, I'm ready to go. Because she is ready. She is she's going to get her shoes, get her in the, uh, try to put them on. I mean, she's not even going to ask for my help. She will try to do everything she's ready to receive. You see, she believes that what daddy said, it's going to come to pass. She doesn't believe that she needs to behave, or she needs to pay, or she needs to wait. None of that goes. When it comes to receiving, she says, it's mine. He said it, it's going to happen. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's head on to the door. You know, so that is the attitude we need to embrace. That's how we need to look at God. He said it in His Word. He said it's true. Just trust that. Just believe that. Amen? Hallelujah. I, I'm telling you, God will always be true to His Word. Amen? We're a proof of it. Because otherwise, you know, none of us would be here. 
Now it says in Psalm 138 and verse 2. That, uh, let's, let's read that because it, it helps to read scripture. Amen. I love reading scripture. But when it comes to the word of God. Here's what I want to tell you. And, and, and I think that this is the right place to say this. It's the word of God. It's not just about the promises of God. And it's not just about the scriptures that you find on these pages. Even though this is the word of God. But the word of God that I'm talking to you about is the living word of God. Is Jesus himself. Is the Lord. And all the scripture is, support, is supposed to support Jesus. And to tell you about Jesus. But really when we talk about the word we talk about, a, uh, we talk about Jesus. We talk about the son of God. We talk about uh, the, the living word. Amen. And here's, here's what it says. I want you to see this. Verse one, uh, Psalm 138. It says here, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for, the, for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The word of God he magnified it over his, over his name. Now you know that his name is above every name. That every, every knee in heaven, on earth, and under earth shall bow before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know that he is the Lord of all. You know that his name is above cancer. His name is above fi fibromyalgia. His, his, his name is above macular degeneration. His name is about any bone cancer. His name is about any sickness or any disease. His name is about every, above everything. And His word is above His name. Now you go figure that. You can trust His word, folks. You can trust in Jesus. You can trust the living word of God. You can trust the word that is expressed on these pages. It never changes. And the word is telling you, you are worthy to receive from him. So you can trust his presence. You can trust his character. You can trust his word. And I'm telling you, you can trust his goodness. Because he will always be good to you. He will always be good to me. He will always be good to all of us. Listen, that is the truth. He is the good shepherd. He is not the bad shepherd. He is not the punishing shepherd. He is not the mad shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He is the loving shepherd. He is the one that cares about us. God is good and we say that all the time to me. Amen. And to you, there's enough of him to go for everyone. And if I start talking to you about the goodness of God, let me just tell you a little bit about it. Let me just tell you that he has prepared everything that you will ever need in life, for life and godliness. Peter tells you in his epistle, he says, God has already given us all that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. Now he also says that he has raised us up and seated us together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. High above every power, every principality, every name that is named out there. Guess what? He placed you far above. Not just a little bit above. He placed you far above every name. Every dominion. Every power. You are in him. Not only that. You can trust the authority that he gave you. Because he gave it to you. And he gave it to me. So say this. I can trust in his presence. With me. And in me. I can trust his character. He will always remain faithful. He will always be strong. He will always be powerful in me and through me. Now say this, I could always trust his word. For he exalted his name. He magnified his name above, above uh, his word above his name. Say, I could, I could trust in God's goodness. He gave everything to me. He raised me up in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. And I could trust his authority. And the authority he gave me. To rule and reign in life. Through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
So listen to me. Is there any reason for you to be concerned about your past? Is there any reason for you to be concerned about your present or your future? The Bible says, Peter says this in, the, in, in, in chapter 5 verse 7. He says this, And cast all your cares about, about, uh, upon him, for he cares for you. That's the key, folks. Just cast them all. Say, I cast all my cares upon him, for he cares for me. Oh, why don't we sing that? Sing this with me. I cast all my cares upon him. I lay all of my burdens down at his feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon him. Now let's sing it to him. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do. I will cast all my cares upon you. Amen. That is the truth, folks. There's no reason for us to be afraid. There's no reason for us to fear. You can trust His present presence. You could trust His characters, His faithfulness, His strength. Amen. You could trust His love. You could trust His word. You could trust His goodness. You could trust in Him. You could trust in the authority that He gave you. Amen. That is the truth, folks. And that should eliminate fear out of our life. Our love should be made p uh, perfect by this, by us focusing on who He is in our lives, folks. That is the truth. Now the question is, why isn't it happening? Why are so many Christians walking defeat in defeat? Defeated out there. Why are so many people, so many Christians struggling in their finances? Why are so many people struggling in their health? Why are so now and, and I'm not condemning those that do. Listen, we are here to hear good news, right? But the question is, why this? Why so much struggle to get a job? Why so much struggle to to, to, to keep a reputation. Why so much struggle against sin? Why all of this? I will tell you why. Anything that you keep from giving to God becomes a struggle, becomes human effort. Here's how Jesus worded it. If you go to Matthew 16, verse 25. How am I doing on time? I got a few minutes, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 16. Matthew 16 says this, uh, verse, let's see, uh, Matthew 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it, shall have it. So if you lose it, you save it. If you try to save it, you lose it. Now, wha what do I mean? Wha what's he meaning by that? Here's the point. Here's what I said, I think, a couple of Sundays ago, and I'm here to remind you of this. We are managers over what God gave us. Our money, it's not our money, it's God's money. Why people have so much struggle in finances is because they think we gave 10% and maybe a little bit above we can do whatever we want with the 90. There's no relationship, folks. It's God's money and it's your money because you're in His family. But it should be relationship with Him. See, your body is not your body. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is yours to manage. So I, I do care what I put in my body. 
You know, I, I, I really, self-control started manifesting in me. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I love 30 pounds less. <laughs> and I love having energy. Much better than eating a bunch of pizza and bread and, and not be able to have energy and carry 30 pounds around. It's true. Now, I'm not condemning people that... that cause See, the next thing that we try to do, okay, well, let's fix it ourselves. And you toughen up, and you try to put self-effort. There's a time then, then God speaks to you, and His self-control starts manifesting in that arena. And you're awesome. You're in a b good shape. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So now, here's, here's what I'm telling you. Whatever it is that you keep from God, are, are you with me? It's you to run. On, on your own. And when we run it on our own, we're not that good at it. As wise as we think we are, as much wisdom as we think we have, we still need the help of God, folks. We need Him to tell us by His Spirit what to do every single step of the way. And I want you to see you can trust your dependency on Him. You can turn so one way or the, or the other. I made this a six-point message. <laughs> but listen to me. Listen, the truth is you can depend on God. Amen. You can trust God, folks. You can trust Him in every circumstance, in every situation. It may not work out the way you want it worked out, but it will work out because God is with you. Because you can trust His character. Because you can trust His presence. Because you can trust His word. Because you can trust His goodness. Because you can trust His authority. Because you can trust your relationship with Him, folks. That's why. That's, that should bring stability to your life. That should bring stability to every one of our lives, folks. And the truth is, everything you give God, you save. Listen. Here's the point. He is the daddy. And I don't know about you, but I know my heart about my kids. You know, I had this happen a number of times. I ask if I need some cash and I don't have cash, I ask my kids for money. And they have cash and they give it to me. And you can ask them, I always give more back. They say, oh, you, you, I didn't give you this much. I said, I know. But it's in my heart to give as a father. You understand? Everything you give God, He gives more back. He takes it and improves upon it. There is nothing that you give Him that He will not improve upon. You give Him your finances, He will improve them. You give Him your health, He will improve it. You give Him your body, He will improve it. You give Him your reputation, He will improve it. You give Him any... I mean, just, just tell me a few things that you can give God. You can give, give God your career. He will improve it. Give God your title. He will improve it. He will up it. I am telling you, there's, there, make no mistake about it. God can, if anybody can do it, God can do it. You know, you give God your children. He will improve them. You don't have to sweat and, and have sleepless nights over your kids. God will improve them. Your grandkids, God will improve them. Just give them to Him. Now, He gave them to you. To manage, you say, Lord, I need your cooperation. But I know they are your kids. They are your grandkids. I mean, they belong to you. And I consider them yours. You just watch. You give him your brain. You'll see how improved that, get, that gets. You know? I mean, you're smart. You're all smart people. Because that's why you're here. Hallelujah. You know, you're around the word of God. But I am telling you, give God everything in your life. And listen, if God will not improve what you give him... Come and take the microphone from me. Say, this is a false message. But the truth is, you will not be able... Listen, do that for three months in a row. Give your finances to God. Give your body to God. Give your life to God. Give your reputation to God. Give your career to God. Give your business to God. Give your job to God. I mean, consider it coming from you. That's what I'm... Don't say, God, you go to work instead of me. <laughs> okay? Give everything you have to God. Do that for three months and come back and tell me that didn't work. That's not going to happen. Folks, we're not going to have that happening because God is God and He's well able to carry His promises through. 
Amen. And now I want to see the manifestation of how some, some of those pro- promises, you know, which is faithful. I believe God put it on my heart to pray for some people. And we will pray for some people this morning here. And if you need help in any area of your life, you don't need to be ashamed. Because, I listen, this is what I'm telling you. God is on the side of the weak. God is on the side of those that need help. He is there to help them. Or if you just simply want to say, I want to give God my life. Now I know you accepted Jesus and you gave your life to Him. But what I am talking to you about is just involving Him in every single area of your life. What I'm talking about is surrendering to the love of God. You know, I am not telling you what great works you are going to do for God. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is let go and let God be the boss in your life. Let Him really rule. Let Him serve you the way He wants to serve you. Would you do that today?